Hi folks, Joe Bon Giovanni here from the Kettle Pond Institute. Um, unfortunately, my partner Pete, Pete is unavailable for uh, us doing a Coffee with Joe video, so um, I'm ha having a cup of coffee. And I'm left to my own designs, and so with my apologies to Pete, I decided I'm going to read something uh, and get it down on video. Um, because I think that it's a very important piece of work and I want to try to put it out there to contrast with the kind of thinking that's going on with Ben Bernanke about, you know, yeah, we've got some more secret tools besides the $4 trillion in authorization to borrow more money. Um, way of thinking about how to run the national economy from a monetary point of view. This act may be cited as the Monetary Control Act of 1934. H.R. 9855 in the House of Representatives, June 4, 1934. Mr. Patman of Texas introduced the following bill, which was referred to the Committee on Banking and Currency. A bill to regulate the value of money in pursuance of Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5, of the Constitution of the United States to create a federal monetary authority to provide an adequate and stable monetary system to prevent bank failures to prevent uncontrolled inflation to prevent depressions to provide a system of control a system to control the price of commodities and the purchasing power of money to restore normal prosperity and assure its continuance and for other purposes. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled that A. The Secretary of the Treasury of the United States is hereby authorized and directed forthwith to purchase the capital stock of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks and branches and agencies thereof and to pay to the owners thereof in lawful money as hereinafter provided the book value of said stock with all lawful increments to the date of purchase. B. That all member banks of the Federal Reserve System are hereby required and directed to deliver forthwith to the Treasurer of the United States by the execution and delivery of such documents as may be prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury all the stock of said Federal Reserve Banks owned or controlled by them together with any and all claims of any kind or nature in and to the capital assets of the said Federal Reserve Banks, it being the intention of this act to vest in the government of the United States the absolute and unconditional ownership of the said Federal Reserve Banks. Section 2A. There is hereby created the Federal Monetary Authority, an agency of the federal government. It shall be composed of seven members appointed by the President by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. It goes on to give the qualifications, the eligibility, and the terms, and, and etc. for the members of the Federal Monetary Authority. E. Upon qualification of a, of a majority of members of the Federal Monetary Authority, the term of office of members of the Federal Reserve Board shall expire and terminate and the Federal Monetary Authority shall assume and take over all the duties and authority previously vested by law in the Federal Reserve Board. F. The Federal Monetary Authority shall be the custodian of the public credit and of the funds of the United States and the agent of the Congress of the United States to issue the money of the United States and to control the value thereof and the value of all foreign currency and coin as provided in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution of the United States. And for this purpose shall have control of the issue of all currency and coin of the United States, and shall have jurisdiction over, and shall control and supervise all banking institutions of the United States and its territories and possessions subject to law, and shall be the fiscal agent of the, of the government. 
G, the Federal Monetary Authority shall have and exercise all the rights, duties, and powers conferred by law upon the Federal Reserve Board and the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States. H, it shall have the power to, to prescribe such rules and regulations not inconsistent with law as it may deem desirable for the safe and proper conduct of the banks and banking institutions within its jurisdictions. Section 3. <clears throat> Section 3 is, uh, is related to the fact that at the time um, we were still on the gold ex we were still on the gold exchange standard and provided for the secretary of the, uh, of the monetary authority to um, control uh, the, the gold uh, for the purpose of, of, of uh, enabling those exchanges um, with um, with uh, uh, foreign countries. Section 4, A. After the passage of this act, all currency to be issued shall be treasury notes of the United States of similar form, size, and denomination to the present Federal Reserve notes, or such other denominations as may be determined by the Federal Monetary Authority. Within one year from the passage of this act, all present Federal Reserve notes, national bank notes, gold certificates, and so certificates, issued and or outstanding, shall be recalled and those turned in for redemption shall be retired and destroyed, and the treasury notes herein provided shall be issued in exchange, it being the purpose of this law to substitute treasury notes herein provided for all other forms of currency or paper money of the United States. B, the treasury notes herein provided shall be legal tender at face value for all debts and dues, public and private, including customs duties. C, the Federal Monetary Authority may, redo, may redeem the Treasury notes here and provided in gold or silver coins at the selling price. Again, it's uh, because it was related to that. D, the decisions of the Federal Monetary Authority as to all questions relating to the exchange of currency for gold or silver and such tra transactions shall be absolute and final. Section 5. A. All individuals, firms, associations, or corporations engaged in the business of banking as defined by law and among other things, receiving deposits of money from the citizens or firms, corporations, or associations of any state, and transferring or transporting said money or the title thereto to individuals, firms, associations, or corporations of any other state or states or territories of the United States, are hereby declared to be engaged in interstate commerce, and as such are subject to federal jurisdiction and to a jurisdiction of the Federal Monetary Authority. B, after one year, one, one year after the passage of this act, all banking institutions of the United States and territories thereof shall be required to keep on hand or on deposit with the Treasurer of the United States or in Federal Reserve Bank in its district, lawful money of the United States for the whole of its deposits, which are subject to check and or payable on demand or, or within 60 days after notice with a further sum equal to 5% upon all savings or investment deposits payable after 60 days notice. 100% reserves on demand deposits, 5% reserves uh, on uh, savings and investment deposits. C, all demand deposits shall be held in trust for the benefits of the depositor and shall not be merged with or become a part of the assets nor shall they be of the bank, nor shall they be liable for its obligations. D. For the purpose of creating the lawful money reserves herein required, the Federal Monetary Authority shall purchase from the banks and from individuals in the United States bonds of the government or any state or municipality thereof, or assets of any bank, or may rediscount at one half of one percent so much of the asset obligations of any banks as may be necessary to supply the required reserves here and, here and after, here above provided. To supply the required reserves here and above provided. That's how the, that's how the reserves are going to be uh, provided for. Section 6. The Federal Monetary Authority shall purchase at a price to be from time to time fixed all gold and silver offered in domestic markets. Not, not, not relevant. Section 7. Price stability. Whenever the wholesale commodity index shall fall below the average for the year 1926, the Federal Reserve Banks, under the direction of the Monetary Authority, 
shall expand bank deposits in the manner here and provided until the wholesale commodity index rises to the average level of the year 1926. End of